pleased to introduce Victor from Educators Credit Union. Thank Thanks you, Amy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for taking time on a lovely summer day. It's nice out there, isn't it? These are the days that I live for in the summer in Wisconsin, right? We don't get many of them, so thank you again for spending your time uh, with us. Talk about something that's near and dear to all of our hearts, money. Um, for those of you that have been with us uh, for the full series, you're going to see this is kind of a, um, a mashup of kind of our credit presentation that we did a little while ago and our budgeting one a little while ago. I'll talk about uh, some of the things in both categories. Those are the two things um, that usually people struggle with the most when it comes to money management. And then uh, we'll talk about budgeting as well. So I am very, very informal, and I love to dispel, dispel money myths, I call them, and then some things or some habits uh, that you might have learned um, that you need some modification. Uh, myself, I was the youngest of seven kids growing up in Racine. I learned a lot of my money habits and money management skills from my mom, who was absolutely positively horrible at money. She just was not a, a good person with money to the point that my dad actually ended up taking her off of the checking account. So um, I learned a lot of bad habits. So I always like to um, tell people good habits and ways of um, making their life better with money. We're committed to helping people achieve financial success by providing financial education and services like this workshop. Also, I really encourage you to go to ecu.com. Um, underneath uh, tools, there's a whole section. It's called For the Community. There's Bonsai Direct that is inside of there. I absolutely love that website because it has, a, oh, you get a little smile. You don't like Bonsai Direct? I got a smile. You don't like, you've used it or you don't like it? No, I, I'm sorry. Um, I've never heard of it. Oh, go, okay, yeah, cool. So it's, it's a site that it has three to five minute articles that you read all about anything from starting your own business, uh, filing taxes, home ownership, buying versus leasing a car. So it has really a lot of information. And that's really our core, because uh, we were founded by teachers way back in 1937 in Racine. So this is just going to be a, a really informal presentation. Um, I added some humor to this one. Uh, I like these little cartoons because they kind of give you an idea of what people's mindset is. This one, we might hang on a bit longer if we get a second mortgage on our house, the dog's house, the bird's house, and the Barbie house. So yeah, right? Second mortgages are definitely one way that people have used the equity in their home. But this kind of really shows where people sometimes really struggle with the um, whole getting money and having money management about them. One of the things that I do like this cartoon for is that the cartoon characters are actually talking about money together in the cartoon. Um, one of the things that is a theme of my presentations is, is please make sure that you're including people in the conversations that are in your household. Uh, one of the terms that I love to use is please don't practice financial infidelity. If you're in a team, you're married, you're cohabitating with somebody, at some point you should be talking about money. Now I'm not saying every Sunday bust out a spreadsheet or chastise each other for buying their hobby toys or what they like to do, but just have an open and honest um, conversation with money about the people that are in the household. It's really helpful. I know my spouse and I, um, our setup is we pick Sunday afternoons, the laundry's going, we just got done with lunch, usually the yard work is done, we're sitting on the deck having a cool beverage, and we just say, hey, what's coming up this week? Is there anything coming up next month? We have a large birthday in our family, our son just got engaged and bought a house, so we're, but there's a lot of things that are financially happening, and we don't wait until they're right there, we kind of uh, plan them out as best that we can. So successful money management, budgeting really is the foundation of financial success. Um, budgeting isn't just for the times that money is tight, it's an ongoing tool to help you better manage your money. I also, you will hear me say interchange uh, savings plan or uh, spending plan. So I don't want people to get freaked out about budgets, right? It's one of those things that people generally will stick their head in the sand about. They're like, oh, a budget, that's just so restrictive. I can't do it, I tried it. There are definitely some elements, hello. 
definitely some elements and some things that you can do that are really easy to get started with your budgeting skills. One of the first things that you can do is try to set some goals. Allow individuals to save. So set just a small term savings plan goal, right? Say that within one year, I would like to have $500 saved up. Start small. Maybe your midterm goal is I want to have one of my credit cards paid off in three years. Maybe your long-term goal is I want to have established a retirement account. One of the things that you really have to do is you have to have the conversation with yourself and then you also have to write it down somewhere and you have to revisit it and you have to put a plan behind it. Because if you're not doing anything with that plan, it's just going to sit there. So I really encourage you to take it in, in bite-sized, smaller pieces so that you don't feel too overwhelmed. One of the things that I always find that people try to do is they try to tackle it all at one time, right? They, they look at their budget and they try to go through and really make mass revisions in their financial life. Take it small. That is the one thing that I see a lot of people will fail on is they take on too much in their budgeting in the beginning and so it ends up failing. I always like the joke, you know, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time, right? Think of your budgeting that way. Think about it as small incremental ways to getting yourself to a better place. One of the things that I always, always encourage, and this is a huge money management tip, is look for ways to automatically fund your savings goals, right? So going back to that, if you wanted to have $500 saved up within one year, and if you have direct deposit coming into your financial institution right now, most financial institutions, you can tell them how to direct that direct deposit once it hits your account. Set up an automatic transfer. Say, hey, every payday, I'm gonna put 10 bucks away and then put it in a separate account. If it has to be an account that's not linked to your current financial institution because you know you'll dip into it, so be it. If it has to be an online platform, I use Eggcorns right now. It's an online app. It's really easy. I put five bucks away every week and it just automatically comes out of my checking account. So really try to automate the process. That is one of the things that um, I have learned over the years. Just automating things has really, really helped me a lot. One of the things that is super important when you're getting into your spending plan is having an emergency savings account. We're about two years outside of the pandemic. I think many of us really could have benefited from having an emergency account set up and established and ready to go. Not that it has to take a pandemic, but we all know this, life happens. There's gonna be some things that just come at you sideways. And if you don't have an emergency account, you generally end up relying on credit. You can either set the $1,000 goal or the $500 goal. One of the things that I say is an emergency account is the essential living expenses. Also think about it as any of your contractual or your obligated expenses that you have to spend every month, right? Most of us are on a cell phone contract, right? If, if you don't pay it, there's, they'll turn you off or there's consequences. Most of us have a, a, a car payment. Most of us have a rent or home payment. Some of us have student loan payments. Those things that you know are coming out every month, those are the ones that I want you to think of as essential expenses. There's obviously groceries and your utilities and that stuff, but just the ones that are the fix you should really be thinking of. I'm a fan of the three to six months worth, but after living through the pandemic, a bigger goal is if you can have one year worth of essential expenses saved up, you're, you're, you're doing golden. You're, you're doing really, really, really well. Uh, again, make everything an automatic process. It can work really, really well. Here is just a general breakdown of what, <clears throat> excuse me, a spending plan could look like. Um, if you YouTube, Google, however you get your information, there are a bunch of budgets and spending plans out there. This is just one variation of what a spending plan can look like. It basically breaks down all of the different categories that you could be spending your money on in your life. As we see, housing, 35%. That's a huge, huge piece of the pie. 
Um, in most cases, this number is actually a little bit larger, especially here in southeast Wisconsin. We have a little bit of a housing shortage. You see new construction for housing units and apartment units going up all the time. So I would say in this area, probably we're closer to 45%. Um, I just seen a, a recent blog that I was reading. In the city of Milwaukee, the average uh, one bedroom apartment is going for about like $1,600 for just a one bedroom. Like obviously that's gonna be different depending on what your area is. Um, but housing, it's so large because there's so much in there. And what I want you to do, I'm not gonna go through each one of these wedges, but when you get to a spending plan category, really sit down and list out all of the stuff that's in there. So an example with housing, there's gonna be your, your house note or your mortgage payment and your rent, right? There's gonna be your utilities, there's gonna be your insurance. If you own a home, there's gonna be taxes. If you own a home, there's gonna be maintenance and repairs. Also inside of there for housing, I'm putting in your utilities. And we're of a day and age now that I am including in people's budget and spending plans, your Wi-Fi is part of your utilities now, right? you know it's very, very difficult to function without Wi-Fi at home. It's possible if you, if you live by a tower and it's really good signal, but those of us, again, that went through the pandemic knew that if you didn't have good Wi-Fi at home, it was really a challenge to make your life, life happen. So I include that inside of there. The other part with the spending plan when we get to budgeting is, is that once you have this really comprehensive list, that's when you can go back and start to fine tune some things. One of the things that we're finding nowadays in the other category is because um, everything is a subscription or a click away on your phone, right? The average American has 12 different subscription services that are pulling money from their account. The average subscription service is about 15 bucks, right? So do the math, that's almost $150 a month in subscription services that you may have signed up for like two years ago, right? Or even just like six months ago, you know how it goes, like introductory offer free for the first three months. And then none of us ever remember to go back in and cancel, right? And then very few of us nowadays are actually going in and balancing our checkbook on a monthly basis. So these automatic things are just continually coming out of your account. So I really encourage you when you're doing your list of all the stuff and all your expenses, two things. One, use your financial institution. I know at Educators Credit Union, I can go right in the financial tools and I can go underneath budget and I can choose restaurants and it'll show me exactly how much I spent in restaurants last month, this month, last year, how much do I spend in gas, all that stuff. So really look at those categories and things that you can start to save some of your money on. One of the examples that we did in our household is this is just about, oh my gosh, it's, uh, it'll be 10 years ago because it was for my 40th birthday. Uh, we got rid of cable. We had AT&T, UVerse 200. It was like the cheapest cable package we could have. That was when HD was coming through over the airwaves. Remember, you just had to get the HD antenna. That's what I asked for for my birthday. The family pitched in put it up on the roof, and now we don't, we don't pay for cable. We just pay for our internet. Transportation is another uh, very interesting one for people. Um, gas prices are super, uh, can be super volatile. I'm old enough to remember, and some of you probably do as well. Remember when it was almost six bucks a gallon for gas about like 15 years ago? That was like crazy, six bucks a gallon. So just think about ways you can mitigate or minimize those. Um, this one is not an active link anymore. I apologize for that. We took that one down. Um, but if you just look at any monthly income worksheets, monthly expense worksheets, and budget worksheets on Google, you're going to find a ton and a ton that pop up. One of the other things that uh, usually ends up happening as well is that uh, people, here's the right one. There's the right one. Uh, people always concentrate on the expense side of life when it comes to budgeting. This is the gig economy, people, right? There's instant access to information. There's instant access to Uber Eats. Uber cars can come pick you up. There's task rabbits. There's a bunch of different things that the internet and high-speed internet has provided you. So when you're thinking about your income, 
I'm telling people now that it's best to have a couple different income streams. Long gone, in my opinion, are the days of just having the one job, right? Just the nine to five. I recommend you have maybe two or three different income streams. For myself, I have three. I work at Educators Credit Union. I'm a landlord, so I have passive income from my rental properties. And then I also do weddings on the side. I will go and perform weddings for family and friends. So those are my three income streams. And I do pretty well, right? And those income streams afford me to do some of the vacations and other things. But I don't want you to overlook when you're thinking about your budgeting and your spending plan, thinking about different income, you know? It's rummage sales season, right? Spend some time, right? You, have some, you know you have some stuff that's in your house that you could probably get rid of that somebody else wants. You don't want to do a rummage sale? eBay, Facebook Marketplace. Really look at different ways that you can increase your income. Um, being an Uber driver, doing DoorDash. I mean, these are all things that are, are now possible because of the internet. So kind of the gist of that is, is when you're doing your um, worksheets, just don't always concentrate on your expenses. Think of there's ways for you to increase your income. I think TaskRabbit is brilliant. It's one of those um, job sites that if you have a certain skill set, you can post it on there and somebody can find you and they'll pay you to do stuff online. Maybe it's organizing grandma's recipes. Maybe it is um, being a personal shopper for them. Just think about the other ways other than the traditional nine to five jobs that are out there. So do you guys think it's better to use a debit card or a credit card to pay an expense and stay within a budget? What do you all think? Depending on the, depending on the perks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a loaded question, right? It is a definitely a loaded question. There's no right answer. It could go either way, right? Um, for me, I live and die on my debit card. I, I usually use that for my gas purchases. If I'm going grocery shopping, I use that. I have some um, families that I have done budgeting with on a one-on-one, -on -one, and they use a credit card to pay for everything. And then what they do is that when the credit card bill comes in the mail, they pay it off every month. They're very, very disciplined, but they have perks. And that's how they end up traveling with their family. So it really just depends on where you're at and what situation that you are in. Um, in our life, we're gonna get to the credit card scenario when we start using, um, when we start, and when we transition into our retired life, we'll be using a credit card and, and reaping the benefits of the points and all that stuff. Also, another thing to bear in mind with good money management is knowing all of those perks and benefits that are out there for you. Um, I talk to many members of the credit union and I say, don't forget to check your reward points. And they look at me kind of blankly like, reward points, what are you talking about? And I'm like, if you have a debit card with the credit union, you're earning reward points. Maybe your financial institution has the same program that you're not uh, did not know about. So again, making sure that you know of all the different points that are out there. This is another good one, especially, especially poignant right now in our day and age. I love to get married, but I'm already in a long-term relationship. Student loans, right? Uh, my spouse still has student loan debt out there and, and we're going to be in our 50s. So student loan debt is one of those things that can really hang out for a hot minute. A couple things that I really encourage Anyone to do that is in a student loan situation is make sure you're on that studentloan.gov site. Please make sure you're keeping up with how much student loan debt you have. That is your number one site if you're going to be eligible for any of the deferments or anything that may allow you to alleviate some of that student loan debt. Right now, the average Wisconsin student is going to walk out owing about $32,000 in student loan debt after graduating college or university. And for every $10,000 you have in student loan debt, that is $100 a month in a monthly payment for the next five to 10 years of your life. So Marquette's an amazing school. You go there, you're probably gonna walk out owing between 60 and $80,000, right? If you're at the $80,000 mark, that's $800 a month in a student loan payment. That's like an apartment, right? That's like half of a mortgage payment. So again, really, really be mindful. Um, I know for me as a Gen Xer, 
it was kind of force fed that you were going to college. And when I went to the student loan office, I was like, uh, sure, I'll take the loans. I really wasn't paying attention. I just kept signing and I walked out of college owing way more um, than what I should have. I've shared this example before. Um, it really is a powerful slide. Um, $2,000, I think we all can agree, is a, a good chunk of money. But at the end of the day, in real, in day-to-day -day life, you can spend $2,000 in a hot minute, especially if you own a vehicle, right? Anybody has any pets at home, right? Emergency room pet visit. You know, our little guy at home, he's turning 10 this year. Started to notice he doesn't sit down as easily as he used to. So we're like, oh, is that a hip surgery? You know, you're like, that'll be a lot of money. I know that. But if you put that on a credit card, 31 years, and you're going to pay back that credit card company 10 grand. Now, this is making only the minimum monthly payment, which would be about $30. So just trying to get you to think about why it's a good idea to set some savings goals. Try to save up money instead of using the credit card as your fallback and your always option when making large purchases. I'm not bashing credit cards. If something were to happen and you need a, a repair immediately, it, it's great to have that access to cash in case something does happen. Here are some alternative bu budgeting methods and you again can find all of these online. Um, think of your fixed costs, right? Split your money into four categories. Fixed, it's gonna be your mortgage rent. That's gonna be usually the same every month. Groceries, most times it's gonna be pretty much in the ballpark. I know inflation has reared its ugly head. We've been very blessed for a very long time. We didn't have to deal with inflation too much, but some of these are gonna be the same every month. One of my number one money management tips for people are you have these fixed expenses. At the beginning of the month, put all of that money into one account. It can be a separate checking account. There's no problem having two checking accounts at the same financial institution, right? It's like you're sitting down at the end of the month and balancing both of them because none of us do that anymore. So if you have all your fixed expenses, dump all that money into one checking account, tell all the fixed expense people, hey, pull out of this account, set it up on automatic so that you know that that bill is taken care of, right? It's really easy, then it's done. Great example for me is um, my mortgage at the credit union. Every time I get paid, I have half my mortgage payment made. So every two weeks I'm making a mortgage payment. I don't even think about it. I've been doing it, I've been there 25 years. I've been doing it the whole time. Mortgage is about to be paid off. It really saves you a lot because then I know the money that's in my checking account, that's mine. That's for my variable or my allowance or guilt-free money. Please also factor in savings. 60% um, of Americans right now don't have a formal account or formal plan for their retirement. I always tell people this, Social Security should be the cherry on your Sunday or the cherry on the piece of your pie. It shouldn't be the whole thing, right? You should strategize a way uh, to make sure that you have something saved up for your retirement. That can be in your investments, should be about five to 15%. Savings, emergency vacation, down payment for a car, et cetera, rainy day, whatever you're saving for, try to make that up. And then don't make it so that you get like five bucks a week for yourself, right? That's not fun, right? You'll get really discouraged. Again, going back to what I said earlier, people get really discouraged when they make their budgets too, too restrictive. So this is again, very similar to the slide, a couple slides ago that was the pie chart, but you have to figure out what works for you, right? You really have to say, am I somebody that I just wanna be able to spend 20% of my income and not worry about it? Fine, that's the way you wanna go, okay. And you're putting 10% away, fine. Again, come up with numbers, that's why I had such flexibility in all of these numbers up here. Any questions so far? Anybody working a really good budget right now? Anybody got any budget tips that they want to share? Let's see if this will stretch me to my soda. Anybody got a budgeting tip? Yeah. Sure. Great. 
you don't want it too complex, right? So that when you're going back to look at it. <laughs> and look at automating things too, is right? <clears throat> like I said, a lot of financials have apps that you can just go in and it'll show you exactly what you're budgeting on. So <clears throat> repayment of debt. It can really loom over your head and what usually ends up happening is, is that a lot of young people don't understand the ramifications of credit card debt and student loan debt. One, because they weren't taught and two, maybe they might, didn't have good role models or just took out a credit card and thought it was gonna be easy peasy and next thing you know, you're 10 grand in credit card debt and you're paying $500 a month in credit cards at 18, 19, 20%. And it's really hard to get out from underneath that situation. You can't wish it away, but you can pay it down with determination and an organized plan. One of the things that I always tell people is, is that please have an understanding of how much debt you're actually in, right? Get a copy of your credit report. It says right on there, mortgage debt. It says all your loans that you're responsible right there. It's a really eye-opening adventure for a lot of people because a lot of us, our credit cards don't all come at the same time, right? There'll be different times in the mail and you're like, okay, I pay that one. And then, you know, just wait for next month. I made the payment, I pay a little bit more, but you don't have a really firm idea. So your number one thing is get a copy of your credit report. See how much debt you're actually in. One of the things that I always tell people is, is that it is a red flag or a warning sign if you have consistently been paying the minimum monthly payments for the last six months. So if you're in a situation that you're only paying the minimum payments on all your credit cards for six months, something's gotta change because you're, you're not gonna get out from underneath it. You're gonna be paying it for 30 years. Couple things you can do. <clears throat> There's a really uh, good, it's called um, bankrate.com. You can go there and they have a bunch of different credit card offers. Think about doing a balance transfer, consolidating all of those credit cards. Number one thing though is that I tell people this, if you're going down that road, you have to attend, you have to put it together with some type of budget. Because if you're out there and you're still thinking you can charge up everything after you consolidate it, you're not learning, right? You're just, you're just robbing Peter to pay Paul. So if you're gonna do a consolidation, I think it's great. Another method you can do is contact the credit card companies and say, hey, I'm not gonna use this credit card anymore. Is there a way that if I stop charging, we can look at a lower monthly interest rate for yourself? So think about that. Also, when you're looking at your credit cards, please make sure you're looking at your monthly statements. Again, these are those reoccurring fees and subscriptions that maybe you didn't put on your debit card. Maybe you put it on your credit card. So it's a thing to think about. Also, make sure that when you are contacting them, that you're following up on the agreements that you have made with them. If you tell them you're not gonna charge anymore and you agree to, pay, agree to pay $200 a month, make sure you stick with that. Also, some of them may not be willing to budge. Be ready for that. They'd be like, nope, sorry, it's our policy not to change interest rates. Okay, that's fine. At least you ask. We've all in this room have heard no before, right? Not like it's any, you know, no. Okay, thank you very much. I had to try. So think about that as all. Well. Credit is one of the things that again, costs people a lot of money. That could be going towards your retirement or it could be going towards other goals that you may have. I love this one. You can pay off our past and save for our future as long as we avoid the present, right? We're not gonna pay anything now. We're gonna be good in the future. So again, at least they're talking to each other about money, another quick funny. For our next vacation, I'm taking the family to Wall Street. They have the most terrifying roller coaster I've ever seen. Um, yes, stock market is, is gonna be volatile. Uh, one of the things, it's just the nature of the stock market. But historically, since the stock market started over 100 years ago, the average rate of return is 10%. So that's a really solid, safe. And the stock market investments should be for the long term. Last one. Little, little political, but not too much. I wish you had the fortitude that the government has, so it does, has been in debt and doesn't stop them from spending. So a couple credit tips, use it wisely. Pay off the balances immediately if possible. 
I always tell people, this is one of my kind of tips for credit, if you're not going to have the item you used your credit card to pay for by the time the bill comes, don't use your credit card. Gas, food, entertainment, don't do cash advances. A pair of shoes, that's fine, right? You're going to pay them off, right? We had a, a formal event we had to go to, and like many of us, went to put on the old dress pants. Whoops, those don't fit anymore. So off to Kohl's we went. I just got the Kohl's bill, we'll be paying it off because I got the Kohl's cash and all that. That's fine. I'm not saying like you should like totally, but just make sure you're mindful of it. Always pay on time. We all have cell phones for the most part, right? How many of you have your bills in your calendar in your cell phone? A couple of you, awesome, awesome, yeah. It's a good tip, right? It'll set you an alert, like ding, oh yeah, rent's due, oh yeah, student loan's due, oh yeah, my credit card's due. So again, think of ways of using technology to your advantage. We already talked about seat cards with lower rates. The other thing that you'll find when you start to look at your monthly statements from your credit cards is, is some credit cards have an annual fee, which for me, that is just kind of crazy, right? Um, the only time that I think it's really applicable is uh, some of the travel cards in like American Express. Um, some of the travel cards will give you like the points to travel and all that, but they'll charge you an, an annual fee. American Express, they're famous for their fees, but they're also famous, they give you some other things like concierge service, if you want to call and arrange a trip or any of that fun stuff. If that card provides you a service that you feel is worthy of that fee, hey, go for it, knock yourself out. But if you've only used that credit card like twice in a year, and it's 40 bucks a year or 100 bucks a year to have that card, why? Like, what? okay. Like, I wouldn't, I don't see any need and having a card that has an annual fee unless you're using all the services. Look for longer grace periods. If you really think about a credit card, it's an, it's an interest-free loan if you use it right. right. You charge now and you have 30 days to pay it back. No, you pay it in full, there's no interest they charge you on it. So again, making sure you're being mindful of that type of information. I have a question about, yeah. how do you feel about these stores, all pennies, uh, targets, and everybody's Walmart. offering you that credit card mm -hmm. or, you know, we'll give you 20% off yeah. purchase and stuff, you know, to have so many of those. I, I tell people, this is, this is my, this is one of my suggestions. Have five credit cards in your life. One should be with your primary financial institution, wherever your direct deposit goes. One should be a petroleum card, mobile, speedway, quick trip, and then you should have three different affinity cards, I call them. This is going to be your Kohl's. This is going to be your Old Navy. This is going to be me. It's Home Depot and Menards. So, and I have Kohl's. And those are my three credit cards. I have a Quick Trip card, Kohl's, Menards, and then I have a Home Depot card, and then I have my card with the credit union. And that's it. Um, I, I was shocked when Walgreens <laughs> offered me a credit card. Yeah, I was like, there is nothing in here I need to put on a credit card, right? And it's, it's really, it's benefiting them, right? Because they get money, they're expecting you to rack it up. The only time that I think that it's a good idea is if you are somebody that does like the Christmas shopping, right? And you do it like all in one day and they're offering you 20% off your total purchase for opening a car. And if you have the money to pay it off right away, fine. I don't have any problems with that at all. But if you're somebody that's just thinking that, oh yeah, that's 20% off, I can buy more. And well, I could probably pay that off when the bill comes again. Be really, really cautious. Be cautious. Yes? Okay, so on that too, there's lots of credit cards that will offer you the six months free financing. Mm -hmm. Is it okay to open them up if you're going to pay them off on time? Yeah, if you do a balance transfer, absolutely. Yeah, but again, I would put calendar reminders in there because we're humans and um, just physiologically, we're not good with numbers in our head. A lot of us aren't, aren't those people. We like six months goes by in a flash anyways. So, and then what happens is if you don't pay it off in the, that six months, it goes all the way back to the first day the interest started, the, the first day you took the loan out. So I think that those are strategies you can use, but you have to use them wisely and you have to know that I'm transferring this balance, I'm not charging anything new, and it has to be paid off by this date. But don't they still charge, they charge you a transfer fee? Like Depends on the card. D depends on the card. 
Depends on the card, friend. Yeah, not all of them do because I've seen some balance transfers that it's free. They don't charge you. I look at yeah. that all the time. Yeah. I, I, have, I don't have to transfer any balance. Mm -hmm. but I, yeah. so if I would have to and I look at they all tell you you're mm -hmm. paying something to transfer. Yep, some of them will, and some of them will have in the bottom zero transfer fee. So those are the ones you want to look for. They're not all the same. Buyer beware. You got to make sure you read your read the fine print. Because if you were transferring three thousand dollars and three percent, is it worth it for you and the interest you would pay? Yeah, that's what you got to do. Yep, you got it. Uh, the spending plan better allocate dollar towards your goals. One of the other things that I always tell people when they're um, looking at debt consolidation or credit card consolidation, consider your current assets. This is one thing a lot of people overlook. If you have a vehicle that's paid off, paid in full, right? And it's not that old, I'm not talking about like your 1998, like if it's like 2000 or new, I'd say probably like 2010 or maybe 2015 or newer. If you have a vehicle that's paid off free and clear, no loans on it, you can probably get a better interest rate by using that vehicle as collateral, take out a loan on that vehicle, pay down on your credit cards, and now you're paying a vehicle loan instead of a credit card loan, which is a much, much lower interest rate. Also, create the emergency savings, I said that. Stop using your credit cards or taking on new credit card loans. Properly maintain your car and home. This is a big one. This is one that um, I am in the guilty bucket for this one. Uh, one of my rental properties, we've had some long-term tenants. Uh, we've been doing some remodeling because there's new tenants coming in. And I have always told myself to do a once around on the properties. I was, I, earlier in my life, I was doing it twice a year, just a walk around of the house. And we just recently did that and I found an attic window that was broken. And I'm like, geez Louise, because nobody looks up there, right? Nobody knows it's there and there was no water coming in. So I'm like, ugh. So properly maintaining that stuff, that's going to, if I would have let it go, that could have been easily roof damage, could have been easily drywall damage on the inside. Um, also with your car, this is really big. Cars are machines, right? They need maintenance at least three times a year, right? You need to get your oil changed at least three times a year. For the younger people in the room, think about it this way. Would you ever, ever let your cell phone go a whole year without an update? No, right? It stopped working. It slowed down. Don't let your car go a whole year without maintenance because if that's your transportation to and from work, one, that's going to be the biggest headache, right? You can't get to work anymore if you got a broke car. And then two, most things nowadays with vehicles, you do proper maintenance. We were talking earlier. I have a Honda. I have a 2006 Honda in our, my garage, 223,000 miles. I still get the oil changed every four months. And it's going like a champ, right? So again, make, take, make sure you're doing that proper maintenance. Uh, please pay more on the credit cards than the minimum monthly payment. I, all, I fully know that life happens sometimes and you're not gonna be able to do that. But again, think of my tip earlier. If you're going six months and you've only been paying the minimum monthly payment, you are in some trouble. Consider consolidating or refinancing. Uh, the refinancing is an interesting one right now. Um, if you have a home, please don't refinance now. Interest rates are really, really high. Um, it's just not the right market for it. Look at some other things like vehicles or some of the free balance transfers to consolidate those payments. Student loans, for those of you that do have student loans, if you have not consolidated yet, Go to that, you know, studentloan.gov. You may be eligible to put everything together. And then also with considering consolidating student loan debt, please make sure that you look at the income-based repayment option. A lot of students will overlook that. If you're filing taxes, they have how much you make. They can base your student loan payment off of your income, not their projections. So if you haven't had a chance to look at that yet, Consolidate your student loans, look at the income-based repayments. So which one do you think is better? To pay off the credit card with the highest interest rate or the lowest balance uh, faster? So would you pay off the $550 one or would you pay off the larger balance with the larger interest rate? Yeah, I would do larger balance, larger interest rate. There's two different methods 
of uh, looking at this, and you can, I didn't put them in here, but they're the, the snowball method, and then there's the avalanche method. Now the snowball method would start with the smallest one, and it would pay an extra $25 onto that smallest one until that one's paid off. And then you would take that payment, add it to your second one monthly payment plus some more, and keep, see how it snowballs, it keeps building on itself till you get to the larger one. The avalanche one is a little bit different. It's where you look at tackling as much as you can in the beginning on your highest debt, and it kind of comes down off the hill faster. So it's just a matter of which one works best for your budget and what you have seen that you can put towards this debt consolidation. Uh, does consolidating make sense? Generally, only if you does not result in the credit cards that are being paid off. Uh, the newer interest rate is lower. The repayment terms do not extend too long. Um, it's necessary to get your, your budget in balance and helps make another goal such as buying a home uh, possible. I've seen this a lot of uh, young people that want to buy a home. Right now it's super challenging to get a home. I've seen homes go for 15, 20% over asking. Mortgage rates are in the six, 7% still. So mortgages are really, really challenging um, for people. But if you're consolidating the debt, please have a plan for what you're gonna do with the savings, right? It's just not a free for all, right? You don't get to go and start charging things back up again. One of the other questions that I get a lot is, well, once I consolidate, what should I do with these open credit cards out there? Again, once you have a copy of your credit report, and if you're not using those cards any longer, start with the newest card, close that one out, wait six months, move to your next newest card, close that one out, wait six months, move to your next uh, card that you wanna close out. Reason that I say that is, is that your credit report is a living, breathing document. It's not static, it's not set in stone. Mine fluctuates between 30 and 40 points any given month, depending on what I have going on. It needs data in order for it to be substantial, right? And have information coming in and out. If you go in a mad rash and you close out all of your credit cards, it has less data now for the score to be calculated off of, so your score is gonna take a big dive, right? So just use that method, just stagger it. You don't need to close them all out at one time. They've been out there for a hot minute anyways, right? But start with your newest, because that has the less weight. Then your oldest one has the most weight to it, because that's one of the things that they look at. Yes? What if you don't close out your credit cards and you just have It's fine, it's fine, nothing wrong there. Nothing at all, nope, nope. The only thing that I would be mindful of is your available balances, right? So the thing that I always caution people is, is that figure out why you have that credit card and what's the most you would ever put on that credit card and why, and then have it capped, right? I really, I've seen some people come in, they're very proud and it's, it's, it, 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 I think it's a very prestigious thing to be able to have this. I'm very nervous of people that have it, but a $25,000 limit on a credit card, right? Like that's, to me, that's insane. Right, but that can be like a big status symbol, right? Like, oh, I, I got, it. I can charge it. That hey, that's great. But thing that I worry about is, is that one, if you were the ever the victim of identity theft or anybody were to get that card, most cases you're protected in fraud situations, so you're not gonna have to pay that back. But you just gave the fraudster basically twenty five thousand dollars, right? Your credit card company is not gonna make you pay for it, but now they just got away with twenty five. Why did you have to have a twenty five thousand dollar limit? And then also, me as a lender, if I'm looking at your credit report and you have six credit cards with a $10,000 limit on all of them, you can be $60,000 in debt in a matter of 24 hours, right? Because you could max out all those cards. That makes me really nervous as a lender. So you could go from zero debt to $60,000 in debt on credit cards. So just look at your minimum, look at your available balances on your credit cards and just make sure it makes sense. And if you can leave them open, that's fine. I'm not gonna hurt them at all. Just make sure you're not paying annual fees on them. So what's consolidating again? Consolidating is like putting everything into one bucket. So like if you have like, an, uh, like a Visa and you have like an Old Navy and then you maybe have a Kohl's, like putting them all together into one, do one, one, one loan. And you do that with your financial institution? Yep, they can do that for you. They can do consolidation loans or you can put everything up into one card if you want. Okay, and then it would be yeah. more consistent off interest rate? Correct. Correct, yep. 
I would take the average of all, all of the debts you're looking to consolidate, and if the new loan is higher than that average, then don't do it. If it's lower, then it makes sense. Yep, yeah, absolutely, good question. Uh, Bondant, talk about that, home buying if possible. Um, for home buying, for younger folks in the room, most mortgage companies like for you to have what we call multiple loans or multiple types of loans out there. We call it trade lines, that's what they're called in the industry. I don't know where that term came from, I have no idea, but that's what they call them, loans. So if you're applying for a mortgage and only thing you have on your credit report is a student loan payment, and maybe that student credit card you opened up with your folks, you're gonna have a hard time getting approved for a mortgage because you don't have enough credit history. So again, the five credit cards, maybe a car loan, student loan payments help out. When you're going for a mortgage, they wanna really make sure that you know what you're doing with credit cards. Uh, talked about this one already. Um, some terms are a long time. Lenkey and Greenpath are places that we work with. Uh, when borrowing on credit is, is good. Annual shopping trip, if it's just your annual shopping trip and that's your Christmas funds and you have set aside money and you put it on your Kohl's card and you get that 20% off or you put it on your travel card to get the points for airline miles, absolutely, as long as you have the money ready to go to pay it off. Purchasing a home, yes. I think I just heard the average home price in the United States, this blew me away. Um, I listen to NPR like a lot because I'm a nerd. Um, but $428,000 is the average price for a home now. I'm like, good Lord, it's crazy. So obviously many of us are going to have to use a loan to purchase. Pay for a vacation. This is one that is really interesting. Um, a lot of, of the travel companies are getting into this uh, game. If it's in your budget and you like to take an annual vacation with the family, Many not times now you can engage a travel agent and you can buy the package and pay for it over time. Think of it like a layaway. Just make sure you understand your interest rate and your fees and cancellation and all that stuff. Um, my niece and uh, her wife, they do this with um, Sandals. Sandals has it. They, pay, they, they take a trip for like two weeks every year and they, in their budget they have $400 and they put that away every month and then they get whatever sandals and that was just something they found and i asked them i said was there any interest and it was a small interest rate and there was no fees so again it makes sense doing home improvements yeah you got to keep the maintenance up on your home purchasing a car unless you have saved up enough for it one of the things that um, is a good money management tip is if you finance a vehicle and you pay the vehicle off keep that monthly payment going put it in a savings account right it's already out of your budget you're not missing it right so that when you get ready for that new car right you'll have the money ready to go a buddy of mine did this right outside of college he bought a pretty nice car and we all thought he was crazy because he told us how much his car payment was and i was like dude that's like almost half your paycheck he's like i know i'll be fine and he was living at home and he paid the thing off and he got a better job and he got promotions, but he kept putting that monthly payment into a savings account. Now he has enough money to buy a car outright every time he wants, right? So it's a good strategy. You're already not missing the payment, right? You're already allocated for it. No, what he did is, so he had a three year car payment and it was like $800 a month. Then when the loan ended at the three years, he kept putting that $800 into a savings account. So with another three years went by, he earned interest on that savings account. He was like, no, I still like the car, but he just kept, so now every time he wants a car, he just pulls out of that savings account and pays for it in cash. He hasn't had to take out a car loan in the last like 20 years. Brilliant. Christmas shopping, ah, too irrational, right? I really think, this is one thing that always baffles me, Christmas is the same day every year, folks, right? It's not like Easter, it doesn't move, right? It's December 25th, but people always get like panicky, like, ooh, do we save enough for, put some money aside. Talk to your financial institution, the credit union, we have a Christmas saving account. You can put 30 bucks away out of every paycheck to your saving, or for your Christmas. Pays you out in November, so you're ready to go. 
I think that Christmas, uh, just in the consumer society that we live in, has a lot of pressure around it, right? To buy gifts and make it about the gifts and all that fun stuff. Maybe you need to take a look at that. Uh, what's your score is the credit unions program. Uh, we're very fortunate. We were one of the first financials in, the, in, the, in Wisconsin. I know we were the first to provide this. This is going way back to the 2000s, the aught years. Uh, make sure your information is up to date. Ensure that accounts are in good standing. Look for lower interest rates that are out there. One of the things that is most interesting on your credit report, the interest rates aren't listed. It won't say Kohl's 29%, which is the rate right now for your Kohl's card. It's crazy. I just I it's got that suit that we just got that I had to pay right away. So it won't tell you what your interest rate is. So make sure you're looking at your monthly statements. It'll tell you on there. Make sure that all the information is correct. About a third of us have incorrect information on our credit reports. And your credit report is your number one way of making sure you're not the victim of identity theft. Cut costs. Told you about my TV package. Do you need all the channels? Um, the ways to minimize grocery costs. Uh, I am a super, super skeptical person. So I've seen all those Aldi commercials, right? Save 30% on your grocery bill. I was like, well, no, that's not right. They can't, that can't be true. So we were pick and save shoppers for a long, long time. <clears throat> so I put Aldi to the test. Went grocery shopping one week, got all of our groceries at pick and save. Exact same items, not, not exactly, they don't have Lay's, but they're potato chips, right? Come on, people, right? Blind taste test, you're not gonna be able to tell the difference between Lay's and a Aldi chip. Anybody can do that? Soda, I'll give you. Soda you can do, soda definitely. But like chips and like cans of corn or you know, like milk, like, mm. unless it's overvice. But that's super spendy, right? So just think about that. We did, and I went to Aldi and I got pretty much the exact same thing and sure enough, it was about 30% cheaper, right? So think of ways that you can minimize that. If you're a larger family, you probably already know this, the big box stores, Costco, uh, Sam's Club, Aldi, or um, yes, see if you can minimize that. Um, we did this with Amazon days that just passed, right? The staple items that we need, toilet paper, paper towel. It was cheaper for me to get it through Amazon than drive down to Costco, right? So if those are deals and things like that to be looking at. Here's another thing that if you're not already doing it, I really encourage you to track your expenses for a period of time and look at ways to reduce costs. One of the things that people are like, Victor, I don't wanna track, I don't want to the paper and pencil. Text yourself, right? You can text yourself every time you spend money. You're at the gas station, send yourself a text. End of the week, go back and look, you do that? Yeah, and yeah. you also text yourself. Yeah, 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 just hey, I'm at here spending this much, yeah. Absolutely. It'll really open your eyes at how much money you're spending in, in different areas. Um, order your debts from largest to smallest and lowest interest rate to highest interest rate. That'll help you get up some payment plan. Um, pay the least minimum to debts every month. Um, that is one thing. Uh, pay at least the minimum and pay more if you can. Don't get trapped into that one. Uh, send extra cash to debt with a high interest rate. Once that's to pay off, reallocate dollars to other goals or debts. Here are the three things. Review all three credit reports once a year. They're used by lenders, employees, insurance companies, and sometimes utility companies. A lot of times people will have what's called risk-based pricing, which means you ever see those commercials for like 0.9% or 0% financing for a vehicle? And then like in the fine print, because I know you read the fine print, it says to well-qualified buyers. Those are usually people that have above a 720 credit score, right? If you have below that, it's gonna cost you more. So the lower your credit score is, the more expensive credit will be for you. So just be mindful of that. Um, so there is available a credit freeze. So now it depends on, I know there was just a recent hack on one of the systems. So if you're in that situation, maybe look at a credit freeze. Um, if you know you're not gonna be in the borrowing world for a hot minute, I don't see any problem with freezing it. There may be a fee, sometimes they have, this kind of keeps changing, I wish they would settle down on a, a structure, but they really haven't. What a freeze means is that when somebody goes to pull your credit report, they're not able to get your credit score. It says this credit file is frozen, please contact the lender. Another good use for that is if it, you have been the habitual victim of um, identity theft. 
So one of the things that we have at the credit union, this is a great organization, this is called GreenPath. Um, they are a debt consolidation agency and a consumer credit counseling agency. I encourage people to use this not just if you're in a bad way. So if you're a member of the credit union, you're thinking about buying a house, you have some student loans out there, your first consultation with them is free. Take advantage of that. Just give them a call up and say, hey, this is what I have going on. I'm thinking about buying a house in two years. I really want to have my student loans paid off. Or hey, you know what? I have been paying the minimum monthly payment on my credit cards for the last six months. I need some help. The really, really wonderful individuals, you get a counselor that works with you one on one. We also have a credit rebuilder loan at the credit union. Um, this helps people if they're in a bad way and they have some collections that are out there. We can help you pay down on that. One of the other things is, is that we have a whole host of staff members that will sit down and go over your credit report with you and point out some ideas and tips for rebuilding your credit union. If you don't have Educators Credit Union in your life, just reach out to your local financial institution. They may have some of these things, but this is one of the reasons why I work at Educators because we're really helping our communities get stronger with their finances. That was a lot of information in a very short amount of time. So any questions that you all had that I maybe did not answer about debt consolidation, finances, I've been in the game for over 25 years now and I've had some pretty bad situations in my life happen. I was one of those kids that took out that credit card right on the campus of UW Parkside. I was like, yeah, sure, why not? Free pizza and a credit card, perfect, yeah. That thing haunted me for like 10 years. Refinancing is, is, let's say that you entered into a loan agreement and the terms aren't as advantageous for you now as they could be. So a great example would be, so people that take out a mortgage loan now, maybe in 10 years they'll refinance that loan for a lower interest rate. So it's the same loan, you're basically just changing the terms of the loan. Oh, so you can make it longer short? Correct, yep, 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 you got it, great question. Snowballing is you start with the lowest debt, pay a little bit more on that one, and then you use that payment and you put on to the next debt, and it, keep the, it keeps building on itself. Like, like when, you, when you build a snowball, you keep adding snow to the ball and it gets bigger. Yep, good question. Any other? Yes? Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. The latter, because <clears throat> it, it depends on a couple different factors. Um, one would be what's your credit like now? You know, do you have good credit? And then two, what's your ability to pay repay the loan? So I can't answer that without like seeing the whole picture. But yeah, I would just sit down and go in and talk to a member finance rep and say, here's what I'm thinking about doing. Yeah, good question. Thank you. Yes. If you full pay your monthly credit card charges, mm -hmm. is there any, um, I, I always charge my groceries because yeah. I get points. There's no disadvantage to doing that. Nope, nope, not at all. You're actually using the way the credit cards were designed to be used. Do you guys, anybody know the, what the first credit card was? It was called the Diners Club card. And it was actually started in New York City. There were a bunch of restaurateurs that wanted to attract the highlight or the elite crowd. And so they gave them, they came up with this credit card and they could put their meals and everything on the diners club card. And as long as they paid it back at the end of the month, they could keep using the card. And then if they didn't, they started to charge them a fee. And so it was really neat. It was kind of how it, how it, how it started. It's a really interesting documentary on uh, PBS about it. But yeah, that's how it kind of started. And credit cards are kind of a very American thing too. A lot of European countries, they just like, in uh, other places in the world, credit's like, oh, I don't want to owe anybody, have anybody over my head. Americans love credit cards. <laughs> we just do. So for emergency funds, when you mm -hmm. want to, um, if you have like at least three to six months, would yep. you still want to keep adding on? 
I, I would, yeah. I would say get to three to six months, and then once you're at that six-month mark, say, uh, do I want to go to nine months? Do I want to go to a year? I would say stopping at probably a year, and then once you've reached that year mark, look at putting those funds to investments, maybe funding your uh, IRA products or different other investments. Maybe, Yeah, uh, individual retirement accounts. Yeah, sorry for your retirement. Yep, you got it. Good question. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, because here's what's happening. Again, people are paying 15 to 20% above. So that down payment is gonna, what's gonna be help you make a stronger deal. Do you have to have 20% coming in for a mortgage nowadays? No. There's some first time home buyer programs where it can be as little as three to 5% of the purchase home. But where that savings money that you have saved up, that's what's gonna be able to help you pay a little bit more. Because if you, um, pay market price or not market if you pay asking price right now you're doing good in the market um, a lot of the deals that I'm hearing of happening even in, in my neighborhood are um, I want to say off the books but that sounds like illegal and it's not the, the the homes never hit the market it's like my uncle Bob selling his house oh my friend Tim I want to buy your house and then uncle Bob and Tim talk and they don't even use a real estate agent it just is sold that way so that's where a lot of the some of the better deals are happening now because then that's not a bidding war. Yep. Is there a strategy you talk about about paying your uh, car loan off so mm -hmm. you don't have enough money for that? You, yeah. Um, you, I think you said like using it as a credit loan. Like yeah, so if you own the vehicle, so let's say that maybe your grandma, grandpa, or somebody gave you a car, right? And it's in your name and there's no loan on it and it still has some residual value or there's still some value to it, let's say $5,000 and you need to pay off a credit card. The loan on that car loan is gonna be lower because there's collateral behind it as opposed to the credit cards where there's no collateral. It's gonna be a higher interest rate. So you basically... Um, Use the car as the collateral for the loan. Okay. Yep, you got it, yep. All good stuff. Any other questions? Yeah, I have another question. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I've had like a credit card, a Visa with um, Chase Bank for mm -hmm. 20 years. Mm -hmm. And then in May, my banker said I should open up a different credit card, another Visa, mm -hmm. because there were better rewards terms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So should I just keep them both open? I don't see why not. Yeah. As long as you're not carrying a balance on both of them. Yeah, I'm not. Then no, yeah. Because yeah, the one, the older one has all the, you know, the monthly automatic payments mm -hmm, and different mm -hmm. things. Yeah. And that would be like. He should be able to set you up with the automatic payments as well. Yeah, I know. It would be fun to, for me to like try to. Yeah. Change. Yeah, it, I would just really look at, like when you get your statements, like I would have him just be like, put them side by side for me. And just say, why is X better than Y? And is Y can have annual fee because I get any more features? Then, yeah, I don't see any problems. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't think there's any problem with that. Okay. As long as you're paying it off every you month. Said to only have so many yeah, cards. if you have like, well, then drop one of your other ones if you're not using it. Okay. Yeah, that that's just my personal. Like, if your life dictates that you need ten, hey, have ten. But it's a little, a little hard to manage it <laughs> after five, right? Yeah. So, collateral is a type of asset. Collateral is like. Collateral is anything that has value. Yep. Uh, nothing. It's, it's kind of the same. Yeah. They're, they're, they're not synonyms, but an asset is anything that you own outright. Like if you paid off your phone, that's an asset because you could sell it on eBay. You have a really great pair of Nikes, that's an asset. You could sell them on eBay. Collateral, same thing. You're not going to be able to put your phone up for collateral for a loan. So think of collateral is more for a loan that you would pledge as collateral for the loan. And an asset is something that you own outright that's in your um, own personal net worth. So collateral helps, like if you have collateral on your house, like let's just say $20,000. Yep. You could use that if you want to buy a car, you can use that for gold. Yep, that would be a home equity, yeah. That, that is equity in your home. Yep, so your home is the collateral, but the equity is what you owe in the home. Oh, and then once you pay off your equity, it turns to collateral. You got it, you got it, you got it. Good stuff. Any other questions for me at all? 
All righty. Well, you all have been great. As Amy said, we have one more uh, coming up in August 29th, 29th and that one's going to be on um, estate planning. So kind of the long, long view. Planning. Yep, something you want to think about. All righty. Well, thank you all so much. I'll hang out here for a little second and break down. Great talking to you all again. <laughs>